Hello, YouTubers. I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Gear. And I'm your host, guitarist Dennis Tape, and I'm in, I'm in my home studio, B. Basically, my living room. Okay. Now, um, I'm sure that. I guess older players usually <laughs> can remember the days of um, having like the, I don't know, PV Backstage Plus, I think it was, uh, or, uh, or some of the crate practice amps and things, and you'd bump into them and, and they'd give you this cavernous sound, right, <sighs> kind of thing. And the reason was because of a spring reverb, right? And spring reverb, as opposed to, you know, today's digital reverbs, um, is a uh, kind of springs, you know, actual springs. Kind of like on the, have you ever seen on the back of a guitar, you know, with a tremolo, like a Stratocaster or whatever, on the back there are four little springs. It's kind of like that. That's the basic idea. And this would create reverb, right? And in fact, you still find those uh, in uh, deluxe reverbs and those kinds of things. Okay, it's a, a preferred reverb. It's kind of a, you know, compared to today's uh, digital reverbs. Okay, and today we're going to look at something uh, quite interesting. Okay. Now, what if you took that reverb, you know, and for example, on a deluxe reverb, it, it's just a knob. You turn it up, right? Uh, a lot of uh, kind of surf guitar kind of thing, uh, you know, the Ventures and those kinds of things. Dick Dale type, right? Um, uh, they would use the reverb and just kind of really turn it up, get that kind of surf guitar sound, if you like. Um, now, here we're going to take a look at the Smurfy Bear reverb. Okay? And it's got a uh, spring reverb here, a real spring reverb. You can feel the springs. But there's a little opening here. You can actually see the springs. And instead of just one knob, it's got all these different controls. Alright, so this is a Smurfy Bear reverb. Now, um, you know, everybody likes the Smurfs, right? You know, Papa Smurf, and, and then there's, you know, Grumpy Smurf, and so on. And, in fact, in in, in France, uh, they're not called the Smurfs. Uh, and, and when I was growing up, I remember, you know, the little blue guys. Which is strange, you know, if they want to call it a Smurfy Bear reverb, you know, then why isn't it blue? You know, but anyway, in France uh, they would call them the Strumpf, right? Instead of the Smurfs. And, and, and when there was a cartoon, you know, with Gargamel and the cat and so on, um, and Papa Smurf, you know, oh, hold on, it's my phone. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, I'm doing a video right now. <laughs> what do you mean, what video? Well, on this Smurfy Bear Reverb. What? I need to look at it more closely. Why? Okay, let me look. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, as it turns out, 
It's not the Smurfy Bear Reverb. It's the Surfy Bear Reverb. Okay. Now that makes more sense. You know? Um, I thought it was kind of a gummy bear reverb, you know? Because it's such a strange name. And I mean, I like gummy bears, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. I, I throw them, in fact. So anyway, I'd always kid my friend about it because it's such a strange name, so I'd, I'd call it, you know, oh, is it that um, gummy bear reverb pedal? What is it? Fruity bear? Something like that. Smurfy bear? I don't know. And he always has to correct me and say, no, no, it's the surfy bear. As in surf rock guitar. Uh, anyway, but... No, this is the Surfy Bear Reverb. And, as I mentioned before, the reason is because it's a real string reverb here. And I guess they have two different models. One with a spring, small spring, and one with a larger spring. You know? And I mean, I have to say, this is really for purists who really want that spring reverb sound. Okay, I mean, it's a classic sound. Again, as I mentioned, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, even the Beach Boys and so on, right? And Dick Dale, the Ventures, and tons of others, you know, uh, the Shadows and all. Basically, all the 60s kind of surf bands or guitarists, you know, would use this kind of reverb. Okay, um, and I think it's a very interesting pedal in the sense that basically um, you have two different uh, settings right here. Basically, uh, it's really, um, one, you have a bypass, so you can turn it on and off. And then here you've got two different mixes. Now, all that means is it's basically two different settings. In other words, you can have one setting, you know, on mix one, and then a different setting on mix two. And For example, you could have a small, turn the reverb kind of down for a small reverb, and then hit the button and have it, you know, have it be this gigantic cavernous reverb. Okay. Um... Beyond that, you know, has a decay and dwell, and it's it, it really is exactly like uh, a reverb you would find on an amplifier. You know, if you turn it down, kind of subtle. You know, for example, on a deluxe reverb, m most people to get a kind of a guitar sound, you know, have the reverb down to you know, even though it can go to ten, have it down to about two or three. And then, um, I guess surf players then turn it up, you know, to seven or eight, get that huge reverb sound. Now, you know, I don't, I don't really play surf guitar, so, you know, um, I mean, this isn't, um, a, a pedal that I buy personally, uh, just because I'm, you know, I don't play that kind of surf guitar. Um, and quite frankly, I like digital reverbs better. You know. But only, don't get me wrong, not not because of the sound quality. But more uh, just because they can do, you know, halls and, or, you know, rooms and all those kinds of things. Um, but for a pure quality uh, spring reverb sound... It doesn't get better than this, you know. Um, so, and, and for me, not being a surf guitarist, uh, you know, uh, when I try that, I mean, I appreciate what it is and, and what it does, okay? Uh, but I can't really recommend this for all players, you know. 
However, it would be good uh, for, you know, those little amp heads uh, that don't have reverb. Right? You just want to give it a reverb. Now, what's interesting, too, is uh, because you can see the springs here, it's a true, you know, spring reverb, is it's mono. Right? So, I mean, this is a really classic... A spring reverb sound you wouldn't expect it to be like unlike a digital reverb that might be stereo and you know do all these <laughs> types of things like almost delay and things it's, it's not what this is okay this is the real uh, spring reverb deal um, it's actually quite an expensive pedal surprising me um, a friend of mine loaned it to me to try out you know um, and it, I mean, it does its job. It's a reverb pedal. So uh, let's take a listen to it. I'll hook it up here and we'll just uh, try it out. Okay, so I've got a, uh, the Surfy Bear reverb hooked up here. Um, and basically, this is just dry signal into the amp. Um, there is a little reverb from the amp, but not much. You can hear it here. turn on the surfy reverb and remember it has two different mixes and and you can it basically kind of an a b switch you can switch them here and basically that just means um mix between the reverb and the guitar in other words you can have a small reverb and then a larger reverb you know if you'd like okay so let's turn one on Okay, right now I have it bypassed. Okay, and I have, now I'm turning it on. There you can hear it, kind of. tone knob, a decay, and so we'll put everything at five here, uh, including it has a dwell setting, I think, yeah. Um, so here's just everything at five, except the volume too, um, overall volume of the reverb. Switch it over to uh, mixer two, um, and instead of five, it's all it's cranked all the way to the max. But all the settings are still at five. So let's try that one.
Let's turn the dwell all the way up. Let's see what that does. some pretty pretty nice sounds actually um, we'll have the mixer here let's turn up the volume more um, so now we're back on um, a the a setting mixer one yeah you can hear that surfy surf surf guitar people you know um, I, I don't know I'm not I, I, you know it's not not really my thing I mean I don't really play surf guitar I mean I appreciate it don't get me wrong um, it's just I'm not certainly not a specialist in that at all um, I don't know uh, you know, personally, I mean, as I said, I like the digital reverb anyway. I, mean, I, I kid you not, I even like it more than the, like the reverb tank and the deluxe reverb, which I like, that's fine. But, um, you know, they just don't have the capabilities of a digital reverb. You know, as far as doing the halls and so on, so on, so on. Um, anyway. So, um, what I was surprised about is that the knobs are not a gimmick at all. I mean, I definitely hear a difference, uh, you know, when you turn the decay knob or the, the dwell knob, <coughs> the volume knob and the mix knob and so on. Um. And I definitely heard a, a difference in the reverb. And I guess, it, you know, if you spent time with it, uh, I guess you could really tone, hone in that kind of um, real nice uh, reverb sound. Spring reverb, you know. Um, it, it's really a specialty pedal, you know, and I don't think that it would impress um, the majority of guitar players in the sense that, um, you know, in fact, uh, one of my friends asked, well, you know, so what, what does this pedal do exactly? Eh, it's just a reverb. 
and there you go. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, however, um, you know, and I would, I do really like reverb, and I think we're an authentic kind of vintage -y tone. Um, this pedal would be great for that. You know, I mean, there's a definite uh, true spring reverb sound, you know, that digital reverbs try to imitate. You know, um, so again, for surf guitar freaks, you know, I don't mean that condescendingly. I mean, people really like surf guitar, play surf guitar, and that's their specialty. Um, this pedal would be great for that. You know, and obviously it's called the Surfy Bear Reverb. You know, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it does that one little specialty kind of reverb sound, you know. And, and I think it would be kind of lost on a lot of guitarists, you know. Um, who don't really care whether it's a, you know, spring reverb tank or a, a digital reverb, you know. Um, but again, uh, you know, unlike a digital reverb, I mean, this thing is mono, as expected as it should be, I guess. Um, you know, because... Um, all the digital reverbs, you know, under stereo and create gigantic atmospheres and so on. Um, and, and this is not that kind of pedal at all. Um, but again, I think it'd be very good as a, uh, you know, if you have one of those little amp heads um, that doesn't have reverb. You know, and I can think of a couple, you know, the little EVH head. Um, doesn't have reverb. Uh, oh, there's a bunch of them, you know, and they don't have reverb for some reason, you know. And for me, I mean, I'm, I just have to have that reverb in the amp. I don't know why. I just like it that way. So this might be a good solution for that. And I notice here, true bypass. You know, so, it's, I mean, it's a quality pedal. Um... Just for me, and I think I think a lot of players, you know, it's not. Um, who who aren't surf guitarists, like you know, play surf guitar exclusively. It's, it's not really a pedal I would buy, you know, um, and not because it's a bad pedal, you know, just a different style of pedal. Um, and I, mean, I can appreciate the quality of it, without a doubt, you know, I mean, it's definitely a quality pedal. In fact, th this I would really consider a boutique pedal, if there's such a thing, you know. Um, but I, I, I just, I just think that most um, guitarists, you know, who, who aren't, um, all that interested in surf guitar or the kind of vintagey um, reverb sound, you know. Um, I just don't think they'd be very impressed <laughs> with this pedal. Um, but who knows? I mean, this might be exactly what you're looking for, which is great. You know, and I do appreciate my friend loaning it to me. Um, and he is a big uh, surf guitar fan, you know, certainly. And, and I'm sure someone like Dick Dale would appreciate this pedal, I would assume. You know, I can't speak for him, but being a surf guitar legend, I mean, you would think that he would appreciate that kind of uh, reverb sound. And I'm sure could demo it much better than I ever could. So there you go. There's a Surfy Bear Reverb. 
uh, ready to go back to its own room. And um, anyway, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's a reverb pedal you'd like to check out. You know, and I do think, um, you know, because it's such a high quality pedal that, um, you know, if you have an amp that doesn't have reverb, certainly this might might be a great choice, you know. Um, I don't know. The other thing is, um, I, I'm not sure how this would work or not, uh, but if you ran distortion through it, and get kind of a lead sound that way, you know. Um, you know, on an amp, you turn up the reverb a bit, you can get a really cool uh, distorted kind of lead tone, you know, with a little depth to it and that kind of thing. So maybe it's good for that as well. Anyway, uh, I do think it's quite kind of a, on the expensive side. I mean, I'm guessing, but I think it's in between like two or three hundred dollars, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. And I guess I should have looked it up before I did this video. Hold on. Okay, so actually, um, this is a, they call it a reverb controller based on the legendary Fender 6G15 unit. Right. So one of, I guess one of the first reverb units, as I understand it. Um, one of the first reverb units available for electric guitar was a Fender 6G15. And so, as I said, it's a real kind of boutique-y pedal. Um, get that authentic, you know, vintage uh, reverb sound for sure. Um, and, woo -y. yeah, that, that is kind of an expensive pedal, actually. Um, it's more between the three and four hundred dollar range. <laughs> Ouch. It's like right in the middle, I think it went three fifty or something. Man, I don't know about that. Uh, wow. Pretty steep and, and very specialized, I think. You know, um, as I said, you know, I think most people wouldn't, I guess, really appreciate what this is exactly, you know. Definitely a cool idea, though, you know. And when you take into account, you know, that if you were to buy one of the Fender units they're, they're talking about, it would be terribly expensive and also not reliable. Or is this, I'm sure, is probably much more reliable. So there you go. There's a Surfy Bear Reverb. All right. See you next time.